Hey guys, I'm likely streaming by the time this video goes up and we'll be doing so a lot more in the future. So if you want to come hang out, say hi, what's up, whatever it is, link is in the description below. Hope to see you out there, but back to the regular schedule content. As it stands right now, we're in an uncharacteristically long dry spell for Modern Warfare. So much so, in fact, that we're approaching the mark of double the length of the previous longest dry spell in the game. That dry spell pertaining to content additions, bug fixes and balancing, and in some aspect, even communication. But with all that considered, this week may actually have a prospect of changing some of that, and possibly if we're really lucky, even all of it. Today, I want to run through with you 10 things that you can look out for in-game this week and the major events that will be taking place. That said, as we go along, I want to hear your thoughts. What of the list are you looking forward to, or is there something else entirely that you may have your sights set on for the next seven days that maybe I forgot to put here on this list? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. And as well, if you are new to the channel, maybe considering that subscribe button and stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare on a daily basis, especially if you're part of that nearly 70% of users who are not. The content will still be here all the same, but if you want to stay in tune with absolutely everything, the option is there. But anyways, let's begin. Let's start with what we'll see tomorrow for sure. The first thing we can talk about is that of a playlist update. This happens every single Tuesday without fail at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or actually it seems like the last couple of weeks, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It seems they were a little bit later than that of the normally scheduled times, but this will likely be the last day that we see the current playlist that we have in this order that we have them in. So Gunfight 1v1, Gun Game, and Shipment 24-7 will all be getting replaced, it seems like. And replacing those, we can see two of the three modes being filled by returning game modes that we've already seen throughout Season 1, that being Cranked and Drop Zone. This was confirmed by an Activision blog post earlier in the day that talked a little bit about some of the smaller things we can expect to see this week, but you'll end up seeing Cranked and Drop Zone coming back. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of Cranked, had a ton of fun with that one back in the day, and of course, whenever it was first introduced, introduced here with season one as well. Had a ton of fun with it. Once you secure your first kill, you have 30 seconds to chain together another one and keep that going. Otherwise, you explode, your streak ends, and then you start the process all over. Drop zone is something where there's no kill streaks that you can actually earn by your kill streaks, but instead, you end up having to secure the drop zone, go for that objective, and also care packages with streaks will drop from the sky at that point. So again, this is another classic, something people had a lot of fun with, but both of those will be returning here for the playlist update as of tomorrow. Now, personally, Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if we see, say, shoot the ship return because we see this rotation seemingly of shoot house 24-7, shipment 24-7, and then recently a combination of both being shoot the ship. And with shipment 24-7 going away as of tomorrow, it'll likely be replaced by something else. But outside of that, those returning modes, we also did get to see the introduction of a new game mode coming tomorrow as well. That being not 1v1 gunfight, but 3v3 gunfight. Instead of taking away one player this time, we're adding a player to each team here. So I'm super excited for this, like we talked about beforehand. I'm all for this because I usually roll when I play with a group of three, myself included. So to be able to finally get that whole squad in on those gunfight games, that'll be fun. And I'm looking forward to that one quite a bit. So hopefully you guys are as well. That'll be coming though. Those are the playlists that we'll be seeing here with it. But that said, next we can end up expecting tomorrow a shop update. This is again, something that happens without fail every single Tuesday. I'd expect two more featured items in the shop. The daily ones always change in the operator and the blueprints categories, but I'd expect two more featured items here with this. But one thing though, that will not be changing is that of the Outback Relief Pack that is currently featured in the shop. This, I don't normally advocate for buying stuff in the shop, but as of a few days ago, Activision and Infinity Ward both teamed up so that 100% of that proceeds for that bundle worth 1,800 COD points will be going directly to the Australian bushfire relief efforts, which to me is huge. That's a great gesture and something that I definitely think is 100% needed here with this. So as always, your hard-earned money is your own. Do with it what you will, but know that this specific bundle doesn't just go into the pockets of corporate Activision. Instead, it goes to a relief effort, which I think is a good cause. So to me, I found that knowledge worthwhile. The next two things we'll talk about here come later in the week, but are things that we actually just learned about and we'll be seeing for the first time here with this week. So on Thursday, it should be something that pops up that we have a developer diary or behind the scenes blog of some sort that there's really no information on what exactly will be going on or how it's going to be formatted. But thanks to Friday's community update from Infinity Ward, it looks to bring this segment to life. When bringing it up in the community update, they again mentioned that it was a developer diary or behind the scenes blog blog. And personally, I think this will be nice and insightful for a certain group of people if it goes how I'm thinking. I myself find the process of developing a game to be really interesting to learn about. So I think that if we got to see a behind the scenes look at the approach to making decisions, the logic behind why something went one way and not the other, and things like that, I think it'd be cool to hear the thought process of things like that that we get presented 
it on a consumer level. And instead of it being a here's what we did deal with it type of thing, it becomes a here's why we did this. Like I said, I think it'd be something that if done in the capacity I'm thinking of would be really cool for some, but it may not be entirely everyone's cup of tea and may not be what everyone wants to hear when thinking about communication from the studio. To which case, that actually brings us to the next point here, the fifth thing to look out for, that being another community blog post. This is something that is going to be another staple in the Call of Duty world for communication that we learned about this past week, and it's another way for developers to stay active with the community and answer questions that they may have had during that duration of the week leading up to the blog post. This looks to be something that is scheduled every single Friday and going to be posted over on the Infinity Ward website, but it's supposed to be that something in these, I would imagine you can expect to see things relating to the current Trello board, like the issues that they're aware of, issues that are in the works, coming content, maybe new modes and events that they can start teasing, another announcement of some kind, as well as just general discussion about the game and the community at large. This, I think, is absolutely huge because it's a way for the studio to convey what they're aware of in a timely and consistent manner, and also keep that channel of communication open in a regular capacity. I think that when we discuss this on Friday, that still is the biggest thing to me. I just want to see that communication, and so having these on a regular basis will be great in my opinion, so long as that they continue and, of course, stay up to the level of communication that we're hoping for. Now, outside of that, rounding out the things that we know will happen here is, again, on Friday, we'll start to see the kickoff of a double XP and a double weapon XP weekend. So a double double of sorts where from Friday, January 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time going until a longer weekend to Tuesday, January 21st at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, you'll have access to double XP for not only your rank and your soldier, but also for your weapons as well. So you can make some solid progress on your rank before season one rounds out in a couple of weeks. You can make some solid progress on your weapons to get some camo challenges done to rank up things that may be otherwise a pain, like your launchers, like your melees. That stuff I'm definitely going to take advantage of, so that'll be available for you guys this entire weekend. So make sure you jump on if you have the opportunity to, to take advantage of it. But that said, that's going to lead us then into our speculation here at this. The stuff that is not confirmed in any way, shape, or form, but it is something that is possible when we talk about it, but may or may not happen. The first of which is that of a potential title update. At this point, I don't really want to keep bringing it up a whole ton because it's kind of like the boogeyman at this point, where everything that we thought we knew of the patterns in Modern Warfare's release and marketing schedule has kind of been thrown out the window here out of the last couple of weeks. It was like clockwork before the holidays where we had an update every two weeks at the very most, if not sooner, with fixes to the game, content additions, and everything in between. But here we are now, two days away from the four-week mark and five days away from the one-month mark on the last title update, game version 1.12. So we're still waiting for that elusive update 1.13, and at this point, I don't know if it will happen this week, but fingers crossed since it has been the longest dry spell in Modern Warfare's short history. And truth be told, I don't even really mean that from the sense of being spoiled and being like, hey, I want another map. I'm getting bored of what we have. I'm more so thinking about it in the sense that it's been a month since our last update and we have some big issues that have popped up in that time. So for that reason, I want this for the prospect of the eighth thing we'll talk about here in this video, plenty of fixes to come to the game. Now sure, yes, some have been fixed. We did actually just recently get an update in the form of hotfix that fixed some issues, but of course there's still a ton that are out there. There's still plenty of game breaking bugs like the out of map exploits, those still persist. Camos can still blind players in some cases with platinum and then gold. Rewards are still not granted for some players from season zero. Maps still are out of the rotation such as Aenea Palace. Names still don't appear over top of teammates and then in some cases they can appear over your teammates from across the map but if there's an enemy that's between you and them the name shows as the enemies so you think that they're a friendly but really they're not. Player collision is still a big thing. There's a bush of all things on Port of Verdansk that can kill you if you walk in into it. So trust me, I could keep going, but I think you get the picture. There's still a ton of stuff that still needs some work, still needs to be fixed. And as much as I'd love to get a new map or two, the longest time without an update to this game is concerning mostly to me because of the large issues that have been presented in the time since the last one. So fingers crossed we get that, but also leading into that topic of conversation is that if we do get a title update, it does have the prospect of potentially giving more 
short content. We don't know exactly what that may be. There's still the and more section of the gunfight and the spec op stuff from the season one promo material at the very beginning. We may still see some maps that are in the game files that pertain to, like we talked about yesterday, the theory that COD 4 is season one, maybe even season two, but there's still stuff in the game files that could be coming as well in terms of new maps. So we'll just have to wait and see if that does come along as well. But right now, there's nothing that really points to that in particular but it could be coming. And the final thing I want to talk about really comes down to, again, it's contingent on if there is an update, but it is something that was mentioned to be coming in the upcoming weeks, that of being more custom classes. Now, Infinity Ward mentioned this a couple of times specifically, but never said how many we'd end up getting. So I don't want to say five, 10, 15, or maybe even 50 more, who knows, just going out there on the extreme, but we could potentially see more custom classes come if an update does actually come in the form of a title update. So that's stuff to consider, but that's going to round out the 10 things to look forward to here this week within Modern Warfare. Some guaranteed, some not so much. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular out of this list you guys are really hoping to see? Anything that maybe I missed you guys think will be coming this week? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We got you covered here on the channel. So if any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But outside of the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. Much the espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.